Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. Um, there is some construction going on in my building so apologies in advance if you can hear some of that in the background. It's quite a down right now but just seconds ago it was loud and it's been going on for the entire day. It's been going on for a couple days now, it just doesn't stop so nothing I can do about it. Let's jump into some news. Um, these are stories from the last couple days that I haven't gotten around to yet and later today I'll do another video with really up-to-date stuff that came out today. But let's just jump into this and first up an interesting new WordPress plugin that integrates a bunch of cryptocurrencies right into the platform. Um, for some context before we start reading this article, most of you probably know what WordPress is, but for those who do not, um, WordPress is a software solution that is what you call a content management system. WordPress is essentially what is running in the background of a lot of blogs and websites. And WordPress, I believe at some point more than 10% of the internet was using WordPress in one way or another. Now you can either buy WordPress directly from the company that makes it, or you can use something like wordpress.com where you can make your own blog online using their software. So there's a variety of different ways that this can be integrated. And one thing about WordPress that makes it very appealing is that there's a bunch of plugins that you can choose to integrate that offer a lot of extra functionalities. And so this is what is being released here, a plugin for WordPress, not official from WordPress themselves, but available on the platform. The crypto world is enabling crypto users to buy, receive, use cryptocurrencies in various places like supermarkets and online shopping. Likewise, Bitvolo Trustless Crypto Payment Gateway has added a plugin that enables the blockers to receive payments in cryptocurrencies. The gateway works on the decentralized nature of the blockchain and supports IOTA, Stellar, XRP and Nano, which then makes it a bit weird that the title only mentions XRP. The plugin also supports SEPA bank transfers. This plugin also ensures that the bloggers don't have to pay any commission on credit payments, which can be as high as 5% of the total amount, reported blockchain reporter. This plugin charges a fee of CHF 0.05 per transaction and allows conversion of fiat currencies into digital currencies. The fiat currencies that are enabled by the plugin are US dollars, euro and CHF. The bloggers using the plugin do not even have to worry about maintenance and technical issues as the plugin operates its own blockchain nodes. In a similar attempt, programmers Dan Darden, Laszlo and Lassie Cloud have managed to develop a plugin for WordPress through which bloggers can accept payment in MIOTA for their website. The trio named their plugin payioda.me. The plugin is compatible with WordPress security as on WordFence. I think that's supposed to be an add-on, not an ass-on. <laughs> WordFence is widely used amongst bloggers using WordPress as it prevents their website from hackers and spams. The publication quoted a post with regards to PayIOTA's compatibility with WordFence that read, The IPN triggers a rule in WordFence. There is an untested compatibility patch, but you must whitelist PayIOTA.me in WordFence. If you remove the post without user agent referral rule or disable WordFence advanced blocking, which works too. The plugin also allows the invoices to last for one week maximum and if the user wishes to update their inventory after a week, they can use the update API call. So got a bit technical here, not sure why this information had to be integrated into the article. It probably wouldn't ha would have been too short other way, uh, otherwise. But here we have it now, WordPress, one of the largest platforms that a lot of the internet runs on in the background. A lot of, a lot of websites are using WordPress and you might not even know it. Um, I think a lot of major a lot of major newspapers have their websites running on WordPress, for example. I don't remember if it was the New York Post or the New York Times, but one of the major New York-based newspapers is definitely using WordPress for their backend. So this is something that is running in the background of a lot of websites. And there are now two separate plugins, at least two plugins, that accept crypto donations directly integrated into WordPress. One that only supports IOTA and one that supports IOTA, Stellar, XRP and Nano. So very good, very good for the groundwork for the mainstreaming of cryptocurrencies. This is all the kind of stuff that might not seem very exciting when it happens because it doesn't have any immediate effects. But that is building the groundwork for a future where cryptocurrency becomes an everyday thing. Let's talk about something less nice and this isn't even the only vulnerability, critical vulnerability that we'll be talking about today, but DX Exchange got into some serious problems. Estonia-based cryptocurrency and tokenized stock exchange DX Exchange has reportedly fixed a critical vulnerability that leaked sensitive user data. 
Technology news website Ars Technica reported on the security leak on de- January 9th, citing an anonymous trader who conducted a security analysis. According to Ars Technica's article, a trader who wished to remain anonymous due to legal concerns noticed that the exchange was sending sensitive data of other users to their browser. After exam- examining the data, the trader has reportedly found that the data included other users' authentication tokens and password reset links. And this quote, I have about 100 collected tokens over 30 minutes. If you wanted to criminalize this, it would be super easy. So, wow. This is, um, there are a lot of security issues with a lot of websites. Um, it's just, these websites are so complex nowadays. The code is so long. There's so much code involved. That is very hard not to have any weaknesses, any problems anywhere. But this is a big one because this is sensitive data just leaking out randomly. This exchange was just sending data, sensitive data of other users to people. And I mean, this is obviously not something that happened on purpose because there's absolutely no reason why a website would be sending out this data. But this means that essentially, if you have the necessary tools and knowledge, you're just being handed information with which you would be able to to get into other people's accounts and and to use their money. You would be able to, um, with these password reset links, you would be able to log into their accounts, set up a new password, change the email associated with their accounts. You could essentially take over completely. So this is incredibly, incredibly worrying. Let's read a bit on to see their, their response and how this was all resolved. The tokens were reportedly formatted in the JSON web token standard and could be easily decoded with the use of online tools, obtaining full names and email addresses of the exchange's users. According to Ars Technica, the trader has explained that the tokens could grant access to their associated accounts as long as the user hasn't manually logged out after the token was leaked. The trader has also reportedly found a way to permanently backdoor an account by using the platform's programming interface, which would grant them access even after a user has logged out. Furthermore, Ars Technica reported that some of the login data leaked by the platform belongs to the employees of the site. The article explains the severity of the issue. In the event that such a token gave unauthorized access to an account with administrative privileges, the hacker might be able to download entire databases, seed the site with malware, and possibly even transfer funds out of user accounts. Do you see how serious this is? This is, um, this is why you always have to be very careful which, who you trust with your money and with your data online. And in the crypto realm where we are dealing with centralized exchanges that hold our tokens for us in many cases, that is especially a worry. So be very careful who you trust, with what you trust them, to which degree you trust them. Never use the same password in multiple places. That is a really big lesson that all of us need to learn. Never ever reuse a password. Once you're compromised in one space, you're compromised everywhere then. So just be careful. Don't give your cryptocurrency tokens to a centralized platform where you don't know how good their security is um, for any longer than you absolutely have to. Ars Technica itself has reportedly checked and confirmed the presence of the vulnerabilities discovered by the trader, obtaining what is described as a large number of authentication tokens through the publicly available programming interface. Ars Technica contacted the exchange and according to the article, the leak has now been fixed. In response to a request for commentary from Cointelegraph, DX Exchange has claimed that the vulnerability has been successfully patched and the customer's funds are completely safe. The CEO of the exchange, Daniel Skowronski, has commented, We are happy to report that the vulnerability has been successfully patched and no user funds were compromised. Okay, I'm very happy that this was seemingly, once this was brought to their attention, it seems like they really got to work to fix this as quickly as they possibly could. So in that sense, they did admirable work here. Um, Vulnerabilities like that, even the best tech people can't completely prevent that from happening. That risk is always there. So we shouldn't be too tough on DX exchange for having these vulnerabilities at all. Um, No website, no database with private information is completely safe and um, completely safe from bugs, from vulnerabilities, from leaks. Something can always sneak in there. That doesn't mean that the people weren't doing the best they could and weren't doing good work there. This is just a side effect of how how pretty much the internet and websites work. So I don't think we should be too mad about this vulnerability being there at all. But this statement here, no users funds were compromised. I'm going to put a big asterisk next to that because um, 
Simply, it doesn't seem like we know if anyone has been able to collect a lot of data using this. That the we don't know for sure if no user funds were compromised. There were probably just no reports of them being compromised. Someone might have simply not yet noticed. We don't know if someone might have been collecting all this data for a nefarious purpose, for a purpose that might not have to do with user funds directly. We simply do not know who has used this. If someone has found this vulnerability before it was brought to their attention and has been able to exploit it. So I think making this a t definitive statement, um, I get that they want to reassure people, but I don't think they can reasonably make such a statement right now. But let us continue on to Bitmain. And um, Bitmain, of course, massive layoffs, getting rid of their CEO. And now we have some rumors as to who the new CEO might be. Cryptocurrency mining giant Bitmain may be about to appoint an existing executive to lead the firm as its new CEO. A South China Morning Post report cited uh, citing people with knowledge of the matter said Thursday that the potential successor of the firm's current co-CEOs Jihan Wu and Mikri Zan, I probably mispronounced that, is Hai Chao Wang. Wang Wang? Probably also mispronounced that. Very sorry, do not speak Chinese. Currently Bitmain's director of product engineering. Wang Wang has already taken over some of the leadership duties, while Wu and Zan are expected to remain as chairman and have the final call in the firm's bigger decisions, according to the report. Back in November, it was reported that Wu had been ousted from the board of Bitmain Technologies Holding Company, the entity currently seeking to go public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Uh, we don't really need more information here, this is just um, more background, but... um. The takeaway here is that right now it looks like they are promoting the um, director of product engineering. Now, I don't know I don't know anything about him. I don't know how good a choice he is. But generally, if you can promote from within your company, if you can promote from within your current leadership, that is generally a good sign. That is generally the most safe way to go with this. That means he already has knowledge of everything that is going on in there. That means he's probably already respected within the company. That means he, it can probably be a smooth transition. And that is what Bitmain currently needs. Um, some reports have said that over 50% of their staff is being let go, that entire divisions of the company are being downsized, are being removed. So they are going through very, very tough times and they really need good, smooth leadership at this point. Um, appointing someone from within their own company is generally a way to make sure that there's a certain level of harmony within the company. Um, if if you drop over 50% of your staff and then you bring in a new CEO from the outside who no one within the company knows, who um, who doesn't have an understanding of the company, who doesn't have any relations or respect within it, instead of promoting from within your own company, that often creates some bad blood within the company. That um, That is often seen as an insult by a lot of the people working there. Just, just imagine being in, in that position. Imagine being working there and... Um, Half your colleagues are gone, your CEO is gone, your company is downsizing, and then they appoint someone who you've never heard of before from some VC firm or some bank or some other company to now lead your company. That feels like an insult. That feels like rubbing salt into the wound. So if they are going through with this, I'm very happy with this decision. Um, like I said, don't know anything about him as a person, but the concept of tapping existing leadership for this role is definitely the way they should be um, they should be going right now another critical vulnerability this time in beams mimble wimble crypto wallet beam of course is the first application of mimble wimble that went to the market um, in a couple days grin will also come out and uh, be released but beam was the first one to the market of this new security protocol and unfortunately within days of being out a critical vulnerability was found this is of course not very good for their um, for their image and press especially so close to grin coming out the team behind Beam, a newly released privacy-oriented cryptocurrency, announced Wednesday that a critical vulner vulnerability has been discovered in its wallet software. Disseminating the information from their official Twitter account, Beam urged users to uninstall the Beam wallet application immediately and re-download a patched version of the application again from their website. The project's GitHub page, which echoes the warning regarding the wallet software, states that details for the vulnerability and the CVE will be published within a week to avoid exploits. Um, a smart decision here, they know a lot of people still have this version of the wallet installed, so they are waiting until a sizable chunk of the user base 
gets the updated wallet without this vulnerability before releasing any details. Because if they release details now, while a lot of people still use this version, then some nefarious people could use that information to hack them, to get their data, to maybe even get their beam. The GitHub page further states, the vulnerability affects all previously released Beam wallets, both desktop and CLI. Do not delete the database or any other wallet data. The vulnerability does not affect wallet data, secret keys or password. So a warning not to delete the actual wallet data, only to delete the software. The announcement specifies that the vulnerability found in the wallet software was discovered solely by the Beam developer team and not reported anywhere else. In a post on Discord, CTO Alex Romanov said the issue was already fixed and that miners and nodes are unaffected. The situation comes just days after Beam became the first cryptocurrency to go live utilizing the privacy tech known as Mimblewimble, which is touted as a means by which transactions can be made confidential and effectively untraceable. Beam launched ahead of Grin, another implementation of the technology that is expected to launch next Tuesday. So we have a similar situation to the one with the exchange that I talked about just five minutes ago in that um, it is very unfortunate that there was such a vulnerability, but they seem to be addressing it in the perfect way here. We are seeing a lot of um, prof professionalism in these newer crypto players, these newer exchanges, newer projects, newer companies in the space where they're dealing with these things very quickly, very efficiently, and in exactly the manner that you would expect them to. So I think, um, I think rather than, rather than treat this as a negative, I think we should ultimately look at this positively. If they are not lying about the fact that their developers found this themselves, then this is, um, this I think is them dealing with it in the best possible way. Uh, they're not releasing any information until they can be sure that the vast majority of people will be safe. They found this themselves before anyone else brought it to their attention. That means their team is on top of this stuff. Now, like I said, they are, in any kind of tech, you always risk vulnerabilities, you always risk bugs, you always risk errors, you always risk security leaks of one kind or another. There is no way to get completely around that. And a software having one or two of those is not necessarily a sign that it's a bad piece of software or that the people creating it don't know what they're doing. All of this stuff is just so incredibly complex nowadays that there are very little pieces of software without vulnerabilities. The important thing is how these vulnerabilities are treated once they come to light. And I think Beam did very well here. And last but not least, yet another former Nasdaq executive joins a blockchain company. Hans Ole Jochumsen, who retired last fall as vice chairman of Nasdaq Europe, has joined the advisory board of Concordium Foundation, the Swiss nonprofit developing a cryptocurrency with a built in compliance function. Revealed exclusively to Coindesk, Jochumsen will guide Concordium's compliance efforts, providing expertise in taxation, know your customer practices, and transaction provenance. The stock market vet told Coindesk he was already invested in the blockchain technology while working at Nasdaq and was involved in multiple activities and projects related to the tech. For example, blockchain-based electronic voting for the shareholders of Nasdaq's Estonian branch. He explained that he sees promise in blockchain technology to radically reduce the cost and time of global transactions for the industry he's worked in for decades. And his quote, Many people forget that when we and that what we see with the financial institutions is that you have a very complicated setup. Every country has its own approach. And if you need to do something globally, it's extremely complicated. And even if in the end the task is solved, somebody has to pay for it and it's the customer, he told Coindesk. In Concordium, there's a great vision for something that financial industry worldwide needs. Concordium, founded by former Saxo Bank CEO and founder Lars Sayer Christensen, is working on a proof-of-stake blockchain and is planning to launch its testnet within the next month. The project aims to combine a built-in anti-money laundering and know-your-customer function with zero-knowledge cryptography and compliance with the European Union's general data protection regulation. The better launch of the mainnet is scheduled for the third quarter of 2019 and Concordium is expected to go live in 2020. And we don't really read, need the rest of this article. Now, Whatever you think about this cryptocurrency itself, I definitely, un I haven't read up on it, but I definitely already know that a lot of people in the crypto space probably do not like this because this has know your customer and any uh, anti-money laundering built right into the blockchain. These compliance features and a lot of people are very much opposed to, re to regulation, to, to compliance essentially. But this kind of cryptocurrency is most certainly aimed directly at banks. 
This is something for the use of major financial players and banks, not for the end user. And they, are, they seem to be creating exactly what banks would be looking for here. Something that is compliant while having all the benefits of a decentralized and cryptographic blockchain. So as far as what they are trying to do here, this hire seems pretty much perfect. This probably also a very expensive choice, but one that will come in very, very usefully. He knows exactly what he is doing. He has relevant experience, very high up. This is exactly the kind of person that the crypto space needs. Now, it's a shame this co he couldn't be hired by one of the major crypto companies, by one of the established blockchain products and projects. But still, seeing this person in the crypto realm is ultimately a net good, in my opinion. And with that, I'm going to end this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. All the links to the articles are in the description as well as ways to support the channel. If you like my content, I would also really appreciate if you just left a like and a comment. I know every YouTuber asks you to do this, but it makes a massive, massive difference. A video that gets a lot of likes and comments on the first day will get a big push by YouTube in search results and recommendations, meaning it will still have good views on the second on the third day, will bring new people to the channel, will help me grow. And if I manage to grow the channel, that means I can put more time and effort and maybe in the future even some money into creating better content for the channel, more content for the channel. Everyone benefits. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with you guys again soon.